All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, a lot of energy. At least today, in the beginning, a lot of energy. <laughs> so first, uh, we're continuing from yesterday, right? Uh, we started email and SMS marketing, okay? So we had covered email marketing till now. Uh, now we want to move on to SMS-based marketing, okay? Um, so as you all know, you know, there's three things we said that uh, besides our traditional digital marketing, we would use emails, SMS, and app, right? So now let's get into S SMS. And first thing, obviously, in everything we talk about, let's, let's look at some of the numbers, right? Um, SMSs are read more than any other form of digital communication. And I think this applies to all of us. We read more SMS on a daily basis than any other digital form, OK? 73% um, have replaced their wristwatch with their phone. So uh, I'm a great example. I, wore, I wear a wristwatch. Um, if you look at the time on it, it's probably not correct. <laughs> and not probably, it is not correct. Because so used to the phone that actually looking at the watch is not anymore. It's like tertiary, not even secondary. It's tertiary. The yeah? third thing I think of is to look at my watch. Okay? So uh, SMSs obviously play a big role because everybody's phone is there. 150 times a day is the average person looks at their phone. And if you think you don't, start counting. OK? So I mean, think about it. Even let's, let's assume 10 hours, 12 hours, you look at it, your phone every 5 or 10 minutes. It's just the way we are. Okay? Very few people. And this is average. There's probably people that look at it much more than 150 times a day. OK? Um, 90% of text messages are open within three minutes. So anytime you have an urgent thing to tell someone, you may not even use WhatsApp. You may actually send them a text message. Correct? Because that's probably the one that they will open first and the fastest. So we're saying that's why SMS is so important when we come to marketing as well, right? 91% of mobile phone owners keep their phone within one meter 24-7. When you sleep at night, it is, you know, as far as your hand can go. Because last thing you want is for you to get up and get the phone, right? You want to wake up and, like, grab the phone and start looking at it. So 91% of the people keep their phone only about a meter away from them 24-7. And most of the time, it's even closer, right? Because it's in our pocket or it's in our desk or whatever. It's even closer than that. So SMS becomes a very good way to communicate, OK? Now, obviously, uh, there's two types of uh, SMS marketing, right? There's outbound, OK? Business sends messages to its customers, OK? And there's inbound. Customers send messages to businesses, OK? It's not anymore one way, right? A lot of times, you'll see campaigns that say, please send us an SMS. That's your inbound, OK? Not just as a business will you communicate out and say, I've got promotions, I've got something special, or whatever. But customers will also SMS you, maybe for more information. Even look at IRCTC, right? Let's, let's use that as an example. When we want PNR details, we send them an SMS, and then they send us an automated SMS back, correct? So um, there's two types, outbound and Inbound. Now, what are the types of SMS marketing? Okay, when first let's talk about outbound, okay? So outbound, business sends out SMS to its target audience, which is what we just described. Okay. The character limit for the SMS is 160 characters. Correct? So we have to fit all our messaging within that. Okay, you can't create a whole big paragraph of what you want to say. You can send longer messages. However, after every 160 characters, it will be treated as an additional message. So sometimes you'll get an SMS that says one of two, or one of three, or whatever. That's because they're breaking it up at 160 characters. Okay? It's not recommended unless you have to send an SMS longer than that. Because you know what? When people start seeing one of two, two of two, and sometimes it's happened to me once or twice, actually, that the second message came first. 
and I'm saying, wait, half message I. And then suddenly the first one comes. Okay? So it's not really recommended you break up the messages. Okay? But if you want to, and there's a longer thing you want to say, uh, you can say it. Uh, you can mask the sender number with your own business name. So you'll see, you know, it'll say TD dash something, something, something. Up to six characters, it allows you to mask it. Okay? Most of us today, when we get messages, it is actually masked. Right? Our bank sends it a certain way. Uh, businesses send it to us a certain way. Um, so like it gave an example, like Nikoni, uh, we'll put M for, M stands for the operator MTNL, D stands for the Delhi circle, and then obviously the sender name. So we all get this all the time on our SMS. If you ever check your SMSs, you'll see there's two characters in the beginning, then there's a dash, and then there is a six character name of the company or whatever identification that is, okay? These messages could be promotional or transactional SMS. So outbound messages can either be promotional or transactional, okay? Just like emails, you have transactional and you have um, promotional. Same thing goes um, in SMS. And I think SMS is used much more when it comes to transactional. We get an SMS for every transaction that we do. Today, you do anything, the bank, uh, your, your purchases, everything, you get a transactional message. Okay, so what are the differences between your promotional and transactional messages, okay? So like it says, for a business, uh, promotional is obviously to promote their offerings, right? Um, you can only send it between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., by the way. That's a window. You cannot send it beyond uh, 9 p.m. at night and not before 9 a.m. in the morning if it's a promotional message, okay? You can send it to D&D numbers. Just systems that are out there today sending SMSs won't allow you to do it. I mean, you can still try, and you set up your own SMS uh, gateway, and you can send it. Problem is, when somebody finds out, try or whatever, they'll block you, okay? Um, masking is not possible when it's a promotional message. No approval required on the template, and priority that it's given is low. So what happens is once these messages go into a transaction server, the priority is low. The transaction messages go first and then promotional messages. Okay, so sometimes you'll see a longer delay when it's a promotional message versus a transactional message. Okay, now going to the transactional side, obviously these are sent in reply to some action a user has taken. Your OTP codes, uh, your delivery notifications, your order notifications, your payments, your bank credits, your bank debits, right? These all come to a transactional SMS. And they can come 24 hours a day. There's no limit on time. Can be sent to DND numbers because, again, you asked for it. So obviously, you can still get the message. Um, masking is possible. SMS gateway needs to approve the message template in this case. Because this is a message that happens very frequently, they need to make sure that the template is all set. So they're not looking for approvals all the time. So the message, let's say you get from your bank, that says your account such and such has been credited such and such, da 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 da. There's a whole message. That's a template that's been approved. Okay, and banks can just keep on sending it. Got it? Okay, and the priority is high because it's a transactional message. No masking possible in the promotional message, but most of the demand or uh, metro and all, they do masking in the promotional message. So in their case, it's not it's not really masked. Um, it's what they've been given. Okay, and if something is written like, uh, I just saw, I, mean, I was just check, cross-checking it, it's written RM-Metro. Yeah. So, Reliance is the first, uh, this thing. Reliance, Mumbai Circle. Mumbai Circle, and, and then Metro, Metro is the is, name of yeah, the shop. Is the name of the shop. It's not truly masking, right? In case of uh, transactional, they can actually change it to anything. So, if you look at the one from your banks or whatever, so Metro has been assigned this ID or whatever okay. it is, right? Single, yeah. Sender ID. Now, they can't mask it. They can't change it to something else and send it. Transactionals, they're assigned one. Let's say IDBI has assigned something. But you'll see that you'll sometimes get multiples of them yeah. from them, right? It might say IDBI something, IDBI, whatever. There's multiple. They're masking those. So it's one sender, but they're masking this, the ID that you see. 
Okay, so there's two different things in there. So what do we do, right? As a business, we need to start a SMS campaign, right? So how do we compose an SMS, okay? Simple things, very similar to whatever we've been talking about all along. Uh, use normal language, no short forms, okay? People have this habit. Because messaging takes only those amount of characters, 160, we try these short forms that maybe you understand and no one else understands, right? So transfer, for instance, can be right TRFR, transfer can be right TRX, I don't know. You can, you can oh, sorry, TRX would be transaction, right? But not everybody understands these short forms. So as a business, if you're creating something, make sure it's understandable by common people, okay? Make the first line attractive by spelling it out. So even if you use short forms, the first line should not have it. At least that should be spelled out, okay? Personalize the message. I know you have 160 characters, but having their first name helps from people from opening it. Hey, Ashish, you've got a special discount today at Metro or whatever. Is it possible? Yes. Just like it is on emails, SMS is work the same way, okay? You can actually customize the messages, the bulk messages that are being sent out, yes. But most people don't do it because of the character limit. They want to get as much of the messaging in there as possible. This is right. right. So, but you can do that. Um, think of notification on smartphones, okay? Only part of the message appears as notification, okay? So compose your message so that the part appearing is interesting. You know, on our phones, we only see a small part. Just like an email, we see that subject and a little bit of a summary. That's the same thing on an SMS, right? So we want to make sure that the messaging is such that the first part is interesting. Okay? Because that's all they're going to be able to see, and they're going to decide if they're going to open your SMS or not. Provide an opt-out mechanism. Same thing as an email. Make sure a customer has a choice to opt out, especially if you're doing promotional. There's no space. Yes, there, there is no space, you're right. And it may be that you actually send a message once in a while that says to opt out and you give a bit.ly or, a, or some small link for them to opt out. But you have to somehow give them an option. Because if they're getting SMSs from you five times a week or seven times a week, last thing you want is they, you know, they start putting themselves on D&D because at least now, now with D&D, then you won't be able to reach them at all. So you rather give them one message a week in there somewhere it says to opt out, click here, or to opt out, you know, a link is there for them. But you have to somehow. You have to fit it in. I mean, and not every time can you just send them promotional message. Now, here's some things that work, right? Proven, right? We do this all the time. Any deals or discounts that are happening, right? We get most of these messages, right? 50% off at... Zara today, I, I don't think Zara ever does 50% off, but let's say Zara 50% off, right? We all would go try to buy something from Zara. Um, exclusive messages. It's something unique to, let's say, somebody who you're sending the message to, okay? Or something that says, you know, you'll see this. It says exclusive deal. I mean, it's sent, sent out to like hundreds of thousands of people, but they still call it exclusive deal, right? It makes us think that it's something for us, okay? And then latest information. If you want to inform them of something, um, people will open it. Okay? I've actually seen, I haven't seen it here. Uh, in the US, uh, there's a fashion uh, site that uh, doesn't send any discounts, um, any promotions on its uh, SMS. And what they send is latest trends all the time. Okay? So they'll say that we've launched... And I'll see the latest trend in women's uh, tops or whatever. Right? They found that people, at least their audience, connects with it more. They click it, they go to the site, and they end up converting at least a good percentage of them. Okay? So they're not using promotions, they're not using discounts, they're not using deals. They're using latest information in a way where people will go to the site. Okay? Your whole purpose is to get them to the site. So. When do we send messages? Okay, these are just some points. Um, but if you use your analytics, etc., you may change this later. Okay, 
What it says is always send messages during business hours. Okay? Most people don't appreciate messages after business hours. Just, just the way they are. Time the messages well based on occasion or event. Let's say Rocky is coming up. Right? So you want to make sure a certain number of days before you send that message that you've got special stuff on sale for Rocky or you've got a special collection for Rocky or whatever it is. Okay? So you have to make sure that the message um, is timed based on occasion and event. Uh, our business hour is normally 9.30 to 10. So is it okay to send during that hour or only the office hours? No, it's, it's normal office hours. You may work 12, 13 hours, but most offices don't. And people have this thing. So, you know, the other thing is your open rates will anyway substantially drop. Okay? Um, if you notice yourself, and this is the best way, you know, don't follow every point we're putting out there. Just think of yourself. If you get a message at 8.30 at night, there's a likelihood you will not look at that message. Because you are busy at home, or... Um, if you're young, you're probably out or about, you're in the gym. Um, something is, you're not, your phone is not in your hand at that moment. Okay? Now, if you had done that at 5 o'clock, more likely that the phone was in my hand or in my pocket. Correct? It's just, we are normal people. This is how we operate at home. If we're a little bit older, we have kids. We are 8.30, we're spending time with the kids, and we're, we're not checking every SMS that comes. So follow that rule, and you'll be fine. You don't have to go by my rules saying, okay, this is what we put. Just think, as, as normal people, when would I check it? And, and you'll get your answer. Look for opportunities to send transactional messages. Okay? Um, so this, the image shows all the different types of transactional messages being sent. Do you know why it says look for opportunity to send transactional messages? A good way to get a customer recall. Absolutely right. Because transactional messages are something that they, the customer will definitely see. This is another way for you to touch point. Right? Because they get a message from you and you've touched point. Not only did they get a message and you touch point, you've actually built loyalty and trust because every way you've told them right so make sure you don't lose that opportunity if there's a transaction happening send an sms don't send more than one promotional message per week you know this is baseline meaning this is what everybody says is the perfect world you don't do that i don't necessarily agree i think this can depend on your business this can depend on how uh, you change. I'll give you an example. So you heard of these flash sale sites, daily deals. So every day their deal changes, right? Or every three hours it changes. In their business, they would have to send the message often, right? They can't send it every once a week. By the end of the week, seven products have changed, right? Or if it's a three-hour flash site, then every three hours a product is changing, okay? So in their case, they may be sending messages at least, at least one or maybe multiple times a day even. I know normally you should not, but in that kind of a business, you have to. Imagine, let's, let's use a flash sale where they do three hours of product changes or whatever. You would probably send one when the product is going live and you would send another one before the product goes away, saying, listen, 15 minutes left, or whatever that time frame is. So it all depends. Um, I not necessarily don't agree with one SMS per week. All right. The other side, inbound, OK? So businesses promote short code and keywords, OK? Customer sends SMS and business replies to the message, OK? So like I said, a lot of times, um, you know, you'll see an ad that says, send us an SMS and we'll, we'll provide you some information or we'll give you some more details, okay? That's something that nowadays a lot of businesses are starting to use. Now you also have missed call, right? A little while ago, you didn't have the missed call services. You only had the inbound SMSs coming in. Now you have both missed call and um, inbound SMS as well.
okay? Great way to get mobile numbers of target customers, okay? This, most people forget, okay? One of the hardest things is to get somebody's mobile number. You can still get their email ID. So if they come to your website, they may leave their email ID, but they will never or not easily give you your mobile number. But if you ask them to send an SMS to get a special discount or a special code or a special coupon, you know what? You suddenly got their mobile number as well. Okay, which is again, very, very, very important for us to have their email IDs, their mobile numbers, so we can keep on connecting with them. Um, like there's an example. So SMS Tuesday big to five, six, seven, eight, nine to buy one, get one free coupon of big cinemas on Tuesdays. Right? This is actually a real campaign that they ran. Okay? Now they could have offered this coupon anyway. Across everything. They didn't. What they did was send a SMS campaign or set an SMS campaign to do this so that people would send this code to them and based on that, they would provide the coupon, but at the same time, they got everybody's mobile number as well. Do they earn money also? Yes. By doing yeah, so inbound, uh, again, it, it, all, this is a big thing with the big programs on TV, right? So because the uh, telephone or telecom operators pay them big money, uh, to um, have people promote inbound uh, SMS. Because they earn, and then they share it with you, yes. I mean, in smaller cases, you won't. But uh, bigger cases, when it's a huge promotion, like let's say in big cinemas, or yeah, they're, they're probably making money out of it. Now, uh, in the above example, just so we can finish this off, um, 56789 is the short code, right? This is what we all hear all the time. And Tuesday big is the keyword. Because based on these two things is how the SMS servers understand what the person is asking for. Okay, and they're unique. Com combination of the two things gives you a unique message. Okay? Now, there's something called premium SMS, okay? So in inbound marketing, you have option of premium message where senders charge premium rates. Not even normal rates. You know, you see these on shows. When you're voting for the best celebrity, best dancer, best whatever, they say uh, SMS charges apply. One rupee per SMS or whatever the charge is. Those are premium SMSs, okay? And the SMS gateway shares the revenue with the business, which is what we were talking about, okay? Example, Konbanega Karupati, they have this. Right? They charge you an X amount to send the SMS, and there's a ref share between the telecom operator and KVC. Okay? And again, if your campaign is large enough, uh, you can also hit those deals where they're premium SMSs. So does the type of SMS marketing that I need to do uh, depends upon what kind of uh, purpose I want to achieve in the sense if I am uh, launching a new product, okay? So what is more preferable, an inbound campaign or an outbound campaign? No, so uh, it's going to be both, right? Um, it, it would not be one anyway. So you would have to have some outbound to get the inbound back also, right? Uh, inbound is great if you're also trying. So let's say outbound is great if you have the database. But if you don't have the database, then you would have to build inbound campaigns. Yeah. Uh, they have to be done simultaneously. Yeah. In most cases, they're done simultaneously. But again, what's your goal? On one side, if you have a good enough database, let's say you have a million people to reach out to, then why would you do the inbound, right? Because you already have the database, actually send the outbound messaging. But let's say you're, you only have 5,000 and you need another 15, 20,000 to people to reach out to. Then you would create inbound so you can get their mobile numbers and also at the same time connect with them. How you can, uh, how is inbound campaign exactly done? You have to uh, publish something somewhere so that to, as in to get the inbound campaign, okay. right? So, yeah, obviously, you would have to use social media or your email or your website, et cetera, to promote that inbound campaign, right? You have to tell people that, listen, um, you're going to get this, like in case of big cinemas, they either publish this in a newspaper ad or they publish it on their website or somewhere saying, send this SMS and get this discount, okay? Now, when the SMS comes, the database starts to build. 
So basically what they're doing, just to say, you know, they're closing the loop, right? Usually marketing is one way or advertising is one way. They're closing the loop. They're now getting uh, the, out, uh, the inbound marketing to give us the number back so it closes the whole loop. So we know who it was. Because otherwise, think about it, you put an ad in a newspaper, how do you know who read it? Or who's even interested in it? Unless they called you or SMS you or whatever. So they're just closing the loop on that. Data services provider, then get some, uh, what do you say, bulk SMS services provider in the initial stage to create the inbound data? No, the inbound data, you would not use the SMS guys. Inbound data, you would either use social uh, media, um, you would use a website, something else, okay? That drives, that's a one-way advertising to get the database built, okay? Um, you would, last thing you want to do is just like an email we talked about yesterday is to buy a database from an SMS provider and say, okay, send it out, send SMS out to all of these, okay? Because again, uh, most of it would be either be spam or um, ultimately the, in your case, you know, a lot of numbers may not exist anymore, may be wrong. So you probably don't want to go out and buy. Now, how do we actually choose an SMS gateway? So it's called a gateway. The provider for the SMS is actually called a gateway, okay? So here are a few things that you need to look out for. Uh, what is the cost? What is the setup cost? A lot of them have one-time setup costs, okay? What is the per SMS cost? Now, per SMS cost also is different between transactional and promotional, okay? They're two different costs. It's not the same cost. Okay, and then if there are any other hidden costs, you know, they may have a clause that says, I don't know, after 10,000 SMS, there'll be an extra 500 rupee charge or whatever they can, they can put in there. Every provider is different, but you want to make sure you read the, uh, the contracts or whatever to make sure it's not there. Okay, now the other thing you want to look for is availability of APIs to integrate with your core software. So if you have a software already, let's say that we've uh, implemented Shopify, we probably want an SMS gateway that integrates with Shopify. Because the transactional SMSs, we don't want to keep on inputting it in the system and the system manually doing it. So as soon as order is placed, transactional message goes out. And as soon as a shipment goes out, transactional message goes out. So you have to have it integrated with your core software, whatever that is. Um, SLAs, so service level agreements, okay, in terms of delivery rate, delivery lag, etc. So basically, these are guarantees they're giving you, saying how fast will messages be delivered, okay? What will what will be the other issues? How much of their system will be up? Like usually, an SLA is like a 99.9% .9 SLA, or some big guys will give you 99.999% SLA. That means their systems will be up for almost 100% of the times, okay? Um, make sure uh, you look at the reports that they can offer you. I've seen very good gateways that just have very bad reporting. They don't give you any reporting. And so problem is the messages go out, but how do you know what happened? When were they were delivered? How many were delivered? Who looked at it? All that kind of stuff are analytics you want back. And those comes from reports and MIS. And then, obviously, do they have good customer support or not? All right, guys, so uh, the last thing we were talking about, right? Um, the last parameter to look for is customer support, right? Do they have not just email and chat, et cetera, but do they have a nice guide to tell you how to use their system? Because a lot of times, you're trying to create an SMS, an inbound or an outbound, whatever, and you don't know what to do. They should have nice how-to guides they should have tutorials, et cetera. So just make sure you look at it. Because I know what happens is price at times overrides everything in your mind, right? Somebody says, I'm gonna give it to you cheapest, you sign on. You forget everything else. Problem is, if you forget everything else, you're gonna have an issue one time or another. And when you do, you're gonna regret it, okay? Might as well check in the beginning that with price, what else is good? There's a couple of guys in India that we just put out there just for you to know. We've worked with these guys. One is Solutions Infini. Uh, the other is Netcore. Uh, if you remember, Netcore is also one of the ones that uh, provides email marketing, right? So they could be one great provider that gives you both. 
By the way, a lot of email marketing companies also provide SMS gateways. Okay, nowadays it's kind of together. Okay, like, like we're putting it together where we call it messaging. They also do the same thing. Okay, now that kind of finishes off SMS marketing from our end. Okay, um, if you have any questions, ask. Otherwise, uh, next thing I want to talk about is your uh, push notifications on uh, your mobile phones.